I have a calligraphy quote that I had in my office uh, here when I was speaker. I took it back to Washington and it's over my door now as I walk out of my office so that I can read it daily. It's a quote by Henry Clay. It says, politics is not about ideological purity or moral self-righteousness. It's about governing. And if you cannot compromise, you cannot govern effectively. <laughs> the Boulder White Clouds bill that passed, it's not the bill I would have written if I were king for a day. It's not the one that Rick Johnson would have written if he were king for a day or Cecil Landers or Rocky Barker. There would have been some differences in them. But this is the bill that we could all agree on. A bunch of years ago, I was on television and I was in a sparring match with a fellow that was representing a timber company. You might remember them, Boise Cascade. Um, <laughs> they, we were in a pretty serious sparring match and, and um, I, was, I was doing pretty good. You know, I was on TV, pow. You know, um, <laughs> you know, it was going well. I thought it was great. And, um, and you know, I smoked them. And um, after it was, and he knew it, you know, and you just know how it is when that goes sometimes, you, you, you're just feeling pretty good. So we walk out, and we're standing in the parking lot, and he says to me, you know, Rick, I'm going to be watching you, because I know you know how to make a point, but I'm going to be watching you to see if you learn how to make a difference. You know, I, that... That little murmuring thing, I felt that in, <laughs> I felt that in my gut. And, um, and I've never forgotten that. We're Facebook friends now, and we send messages back and forth. But when he sees a quote, he lives uh, in the Midwest, when he sees a quote that sounds like I'm getting a little out there, he reminds me. But he was right. The thing about compromise is you have to decide why you're there. Are you there to make a point? A lot of people are elected to do that. A lot of people who run advocacy groups, special interest groups, or whatever you want to call them. I call them public interest groups. If you are there to represent the public, you are there to make a difference, not make a point. I've got this amazing job that I've had. But part of it is these amazing people who do these things. And these are people from all sides of the issue. And I'm the guy who gets to walk in both camps, in all camps. And that's really shaped the way that I look at a whole lot of issues in Idaho. And why I, you know, one of the reasons I love Idaho is beyond our beauty, beyond this, is we have, you know, very strong-willed, but remarkably open-minded people here. Cecil, being a Democratic governor in Idaho, you never had to compromise, did you? <laughs> yes, but I won a lot of battles. <laughs> anyway, compromise is not a dirty word. It's an absolute necessity, has been pointed out, and there's no sense in me belaboring that point. But I would say the two sides have to have individuals in the leadership roles where they're willing to compromise to achieve something. Now, in, in the political world, one of the first things you do is learn to count. You count how many votes there are for your position, and if you've got the horses, you run with them. If you don't, ooh, you compromise. <laughs> <laughs> the Idaho story is seated before me. Doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat or Republican, uh, we recognize that public lands are there for the public, they're for the people. And some of those areas are so sensitive and so fragile that, that they have to be protected. Or it would be like the open pit mine that you saw on the, on the film a while ago. Uh, there, have to, there has to be a protective device out there. Now, we haven't done badly. Uh, we're second only to California in the lower 48 in total acreage of wilderness, but there's more to be done. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a pit, areas in the upper Clearwater and the upper St. Joe and the Pioneers and some of them that should be added to that. But it's going to take this man, this man, and others that, that may not even be here today, like the young people from Boise High School sitting right over here. Uh, they're the ones that, that are going to be protecting and seeing that those areas are not violated.
It's always interesting to me when people come up and say, that are against any wilderness, say, well, you just locked it up and threw away the key and stuff. As this society becomes more complex and people seek outlets and ways to get out and away from the complexities of civilization, these areas are going to become more valuable in the future. Now, it may be that 100 years from now, people will say, you know what, we need that molly that's up there at Castle Peak and hell with the wilderness, let's change it and go up and do it. I don't know. I kind of doubt it because it's going to be more valuable in the future than it is today. So it's important that we protect these areas while we can. And that's what I'll continue to work on because of the inspiration of all of you and these people sitting next to me. Thank you for being here. The Idaho story is that the people care. And there's enough people, there has always been enough people that care to, to put forth the protective areas. Maybe we didn't win them all, but we haven't done too badly, and it's because of the attitude of the individual human beings, men and women in Idaho, that are willing to sit down and work together. So don't let it in. And I speak to the young people over here right now. I'll be long gone, but there'll be more of that out there that has to be protected. Thanks, Bruce.